You can block people in real life. Just like you block or mute people online, you can do it in real life and you should do it. If there are people in your life that you feel like should not have access to you, they drain you, you feel like they're, they have ill intent, malicious, they're not a girl's girl, no matter how much they try to convince you that they're a girl's girl, whatever gut feeling it is, take it as a sign and drift and drift and drift. If you think you made a wrong decision, you can maybe come back. But just because something doesn't feel good initially doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. Unless you decide that what you did was wrong and then move away, but come back. In short, live your life the way you want and stop paying attention to the crazy people on TikTok. It will be good if it feels good. She said that if it feels bad, you should do it again to be sure it was bad. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are going to see why men don't ask women on dating. Let's get started right away. You feminist women out here, making these good men not want to be good men. I don't need no man. I can do it all by myself, can you? Can you? I mean, I know physically I can take care of myself. I've been on my own since I was 17. Do I want to take care of myself all the time? No. Do I want to be independent all the time? No, I don't. Do I want to take care of somebody? Yes, I do. Do I want to make sure dinner is cooked and laundry is done and contributing to the household and taking care of the kids? Yes. Yes, I do. And then we got all you waffles out here ruining good men. They don't want to be good men because of feminists. Of course, feminism is making it impossible for men to be men, which is a good thing. There is no doubt that a movement for equal rights and chances is the real reason why some men are having a hard time being good people. Yes, women are crazy if they want to live their own lives or even just take care of themselves. It is really shocking that women might want to help out around the house or take care of their children without a man telling them what to do. By remember what she said at the end of the movie. The other thing I've learned the hard way is how important your character and honesty are. What does that mean? You'll make mistakes, but sometimes, especially when you're talking to an extreme feminist or a strong, independent woman, they'll say things that are meant to make you angry and you won't be able to answer. Why not? Not because you don't know how to, but because you value your time and want to make money. I'm looking for a man. No. Not looking for a man. It's about to be summer. Why are y'all looking for men? No, look for them when it's cold out, not when it's warm. Yes, but not with guys approving of you, beautiful girl. Summer doesn't mean anything. It would be like being alone in the winter. Age, did you wake up and realize that you no longer wanted to be a strong... She pretty much talks about like coming to the realization that she no longer wants to be a strong, independent black woman. I will have to say that it's just now hitting me. I just turned 33 and I will say, I think it's this year that it's really hit me that I do not want the title of a strong, independent black woman, okay? I am a single divorced mom. I have been divorced now for four years, going on five years. So I have been doing this whole thing by myself, literally doing everything, right? For me and my daughter for the past five years. And I will say that Although I am very happy with my life, I pray for a soft life, a life where the financial weight and the financial burden doesn't fall on me. Actually, I don't want a financial burden in our household period, but I really do not want to carry the weights in that capacity at all. I want to be able to live a life of leisure, a soft life, a slow life. Like I am so tired. And although I do feel like I carry it well, like, yes, you probably can't even tell that I'm tired because I do feel like I carry it well. That's not a good thing in itself. Like, I, it shouldn't be a badge of honor for me having to go through all these different struggles to be, you know, great, right? Like, I look forward to the day where I marry someone that kind of relieves me of the stress of like day-to-day -day life. And to be honest, I feel softer. I feel more feminine whenever I'm able to rest a lot more. And right now, I'm not able to do so as much because again, I'm doing this by myself. I am a single mom, but I know, and God knows, there will come a day, <laughs> there will come a day where I can really truly tap into my soft, girl era where I do not have to be this strong woman that's always carrying every single thing like that I can rest where I can trust somebody to 
One thing you need to know about women is that they hate. They hate making these big choices so much because it wears them down. Talk about everyday things, like what pictures will hang on the walls and what color the walls will be. They are very tired after making these choices. They think about what color the walls should be, what they want, how they want to set up the house, and everything outside the house for days, months, or even years. What should we eat? How should I dress my child? How do you think the world will see them? They think about these things for hours, nights, and days. But a man can walk in and say, the walls are fine. Oh, I come home tonight, night out with my pals, my chums, have a good time, ready to dive into bed. And guess what? Right, I washed my bedding tonight. I... No! Yes, yes, I will be the first to say I was wrong earlier. Being a lady in your 30s is really, really hard. You need to make your own bed, too. Give this one a cookie because she deserves it when she's done. I keep getting comments and DMs asking me if I'm single, dating, other variations of that. And I thought this new year would be a great opportunity to explain how I'm feeling about dating right now in more detail. Let's say I pull out a jar and I go, guess what? There are 10 M&Ms in this jar. And you go, Laura, that's amazing. I love M&Ms more than anything else in the world. And you're like, yep, get in here and pick out your M&M um, so you can be happy for the rest of your life. And then so you stick your hand in there and all of a sudden you're in horrible pain and you go, hey, what the? And I go, oh my God, I forgot to mention. Also in the jar, um, it's filled with maggots and needles and acid. But keep sticking your hand in there. It's worth it to find the M&M. So you keep sticking your hand in there, but the maggots bite you or whatever maggots do and the needle stab you and the acid burns you. So you tell me, hey, this isn't fun for me at all. So I say, well, I think you're just really bad at picking out M&Ms and it kind of seems like you like getting um, bitten and stabbed and burned. But you need to get back in there because there are millions of other hands looking for those M&Ms. Here's some advice from people who found M&Ms before years ago, um, even though it sounds like they're not M&Ms at all. And so you keep trying, but you realize that every single time you stick your hand in here, you're just getting hurt. And every time you pull your hand out, it's getting more and more disfigured and you're starting not to recognize yourself. And there was this one time you thought you found an M&M, um, but it was a maggot pretending to be an M&M for some time. And you go, hey, I don't wanna do this anymore. It doesn't seem worth it for the M&M. And I go, no, you don't understand. You won't be happy and fulfilled until you have an M&M. Also, you're going about it all wrong. Um, you need to try setting good boundaries. But then you realize boundaries are just sticking your hand in the jar and just pulling it out faster than normal so you're not as disfigured and hurt. So then I go, hey, have you tried only picking the ones that give you money and then be mean to them so that they give you more money? And you go, I've been bitten by the maggots and stabbed by the needles and burned by the acid so much to know there is no financial compensation that makes it worth it. Um, also, I can't even find a normal M&M. How am I going to find an M&M with money? So then I call you a pick me that deserves to get hurt because you won't evolve your M&M picking strategy with the times. Hey. Doesn't that make you want to punch me in the face really, really hard? Did I mention that all the while the maggots and needles and acid are screaming at you that you're too stuck up and you need to lower their standards and be their surrogate mommy or else you're going to die alone? But don't worry, they want you to stick your hand back in the jar because they're not going to bite and burn and stab you like that those other ones did. Here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm closing the jar. I'm going to throw the jar in the ocean and I'm going to work on fixing my hand. Am I ever going to stick my hand in the jar again? I really don't want to right now, but maybe that will change with time. But I think right now I'm tired of being told that I'm not good at picking M&Ms and that my standards are too high just because I want to be with someone who is kind to me and treats me like a human being. My orthodontist once told me that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It is starting to feel like insanity to keep drinking from the Kool-Aid that keeps poisoning me. So I'm not anymore. Thanks. I do understand what you mean, but I don't see any changes. Perhaps there is a different approach I should use instead of the one I'm using at the moment. How does that look? Now that you've said that, maybe you should look inside the jar before sticking your hand in it again. Oh no, bugs are living in there. That has needles in it. I'm not going to put my hand in there no matter what. I'm going to get a tool instead and stick it down there to pull something out. For example, I've seen jewelers go to pawn shops and look at gold. You can even see this on TV. I use tongs or whatever you want to call them to hold something up to the light.
I hold that diamond up to the light and look at it with a magnifying glass to see if it's valuable, rare, or real. I shouldn't say that, though, because you watch these daily shows because you listen to stupid. TikTok advice that isn't very good. After that, you keep going in the same loop because it sounds good. It makes you feel good, and you love what you heard. There may be hope. You don't just sit back and wonder if this will really work. This list makes me think that I'm going to meet a guy who wants me for things I can't give him. I'm not really like that. We'll never really know how much he loves me for who I am. You might want to change your strategy and say, I need to look into this person a little more. Click like to let other people know you like this show. You'll know when I add new shots if you click the bell. Thanks for everything you've done. Do something right away. Check out more movies of people running into walls by coming back to this page.